Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul. Adam Freeman here in Atlanta, Georgia. Paul Brees is in Brentwood, Tennessee, and we are celebrating our 100th episode, Paul. Did you think on March 26th, when the whole world shut down, that this little venture would have gotten this far? Uh, yes and no. Uh, there was a time where we were just grinding it out, right? Because <laughs> nothing else going on. Uh, then things started happening. I uh, uh, went back to work. Uh, days and nights become shorter. So, yep. um, but yeah, good to see uh, we hit the 100 mark, man. We've kind of stuck this thing out, um, especially those that have followed us in, from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's 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 been fun. I mean, it was kind of your your brainchild. Hey, let's do something, and um, you know, we had got I got you up here for some golf, and hopefully, I'll, I can get get up there for some golf, and uh, we can make another episode out of that. But uh, yeah, man, hitting a hundred episodes—that's kind of like uh, Seinfeld Friends territory, right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jesus. It is. It's it's big time. It's big time. But uh, yeah, man. So uh, ha- I guess hats off to us for uh, for like you said, grinding it out. Because at times, man, it was. It was and we were talking like back in March and April. We're talking like Korean baseball. That's right. <laughs> like That's right. the Deuce on Bears, and you know we were we were trying to forecast what's baseball going to look like and are we going to play college football and what's it going to look like and NFL and the draft that we did the live draft that we did I thought that was pretty cool then we had the we had the trivia thing that we did which was pretty awesome which we need yeah. to do again uh, at some point um, I think that would be that would be pretty cool um, but yeah man it's been a lot of fun and uh, we're going to we're going to keep grinding out keep doing it and uh, and uh, hopefully uh maybe have some more, we had some great, had some great guests in our first hundred, uh, you know, I mean, had the, the Barry Goheen episode was big, um, you know, uh, Zach Yenzer and, uh, uh, Chris Hughes from Fairview. Um, you know, that was a big one for us. Um, Andrew Wilson was a big one for us as well. Um, so we had some great interviews. Um, uh, Jay Johnson was a great one as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun getting our YouTube channel going, which, by the way, everybody, our YouTube channel, uh, subscribe to that. It's Drive Through Sports uh, with Adam and Paul. And uh, you can you can check us out there as well as uh, check us out on Apple Podcast, uh, Google Podcast, iHeart, and Spotify. Uh, and, of course, trying to get our Twitter game going at, at D Through Sports. Um, and uh, if you want some Drive Through Sports merchandise, you can always Venmo. Uh, me at HNS Broadcasting with a t-shirt size and address and I will mail it to you brother uh, so we can still crank out some of those uh, some of those shirts but uh, it's been a lot of fun and um, we're going to keep we're going to keep doing it. that that gets us to kind of our first talking point of, of the night um, Justin Johnson takes a lead in the final day you know he's done that several times and has not come up with the victory, he's gone in, uh, you know, with the lead, and I think uh, finished second. He's finished top five, and he's dropped, and he was just, he was just unstoppable, man. I mean, he was just hitting shots like crazy. Um, played it and didn't didn't play. You know, he played aggressive the whole time and uh, paid off. Got the green jacket. He's in elite company now. Yeah, you know, I, if there's anybody that deserves it, it's it's uh, you know DJ. Uh, I guess, you know, some may say Rory, right? Um, yeah. You feel sorry for one of these two guys, but uh, Dustin Johnson's been playing lights out, you know, this whole shortened golf season, right? And, uh, you know, he, he's going to get to turn it around, you know, in just uh, a few months, right? And uh, see if he can do it again in, what, like April or something? Yeah, they, I mean, they're going to play it again in, uh, in April. So, um, mm-hmm. short turnaround. And – What's amazing is when we were talking about, you know, leading up to the Masters, we are like, well, who you got, who you got, and what did I say? I was the idiot. It was like, I don't know, man. I don't know if DJ may have some holdover from the, uh, the COVID. He might still be fatigued and might not be able to 
to last out there, he might fade. Well, he was strong from the get-go, so that shows you what I know. I don't know anything uh, about about golf. And my boy Xander Shoffley, I thought was going to be at least top five. He let uh, him down. So I'll tell you something that VJ really is good at is uh, you know hitting the green in regulation. He doesn't leave himself a too difficult uh, birdie, a you know putt. Uh, he could stick it in there pretty tight. Um, you know, he was doing that and he was doing that on par fives. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And so um, yeah, guys just ridiculous dialed in. And, and if you're talking about consummate, uh, guy that looks over his putt, analyzes everything. Oh yeah. He would drive me nuts if I was playing with him because <laughs> he studies the green forever over yeah. like a seven footer. Right. He's yeah. gone oh, yeah. side of the green to the other. He's, you know, talking to his caddy. They're looking again. Let's, and that yeah. would just rile me to no end because I'm just to get up there and hit it guy. <laughs> that's why I he, know. That's why he's got a green jacket and I don't. Yeah, that's true. Now his brother's his caddy, correct? Uh yeah. Yep. Yep. So he's the like they go back and forth with the whole, I think he probably uh makes it to the makes it so that like, you know. They do it together, uh, almost like a tag team effort. Um, and he relies on his brother's eyes and feel a lot. He taught. He, sp- he spoke about that in the uh, in the press conference. I think after the third round, uh, they were asking him about that. And his brother has a, has a lot to do with that. But great win by DJ. And again, nobody deserves it more. The guy the guy grinds. Uh, the guy, guy works hard at his game. And uh, you know, I just. I just hate that he couldn't do it in front of a full gallery. That's the only thing, you know, because a guy like that uh, deserves to be able to to enjoy it with uh, the full full effect. And hopefully, we'll get that uh, come April. All right. So next on the docket here, the coaching hot seat. Now I'm talking college football, Reese. There's one name that actually he comes to mind, but he's already been jettisoned, and that's Will Muschamp. Um, fifth year at South Carolina, I think the, the powers that be just kind of got tired of the, the 500. I think he was 28 and 30 in five years there. And more than that, I think he just had some bad losses. Uh, yeah, bro. probably I mean, had about three of them to Tennessee. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, just bad losses there. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, Kentucky had beaten them like up until last year, they'd beaten them like four or five years in a row. Um, so, and that's hung them away. It didn't matter. They were, they were beating them. And uh, that's not going to sit too well with the, with the Gamecock faithful. And so they, they told him to pack his bags basically on Sunday. And that, that, uh, is there anybody else out there that you think needs to be kind of looking over their shoulder? I've got another one for you, but uh, anybody come to mind? I mean, we could always say Derek Mason and Vandy, right? <laughs> That's the, I mean, but that seat's not hot. That seat's just like, that's, look, that seat just needs to be occupied by somebody. Well, the problem is the kids are leaving, right? Yeah. Um, in, in droves. They, they, the uh, transfer portal is uh, not been very kind to Vanderbilt. And, now, uh, are, are they kids. flat out transferring or are they opting out or what are they doing? Both? Well, they had a bunch opt out and then the now, Kids are just leaving in, uh, you know, big time. So it's uh, it's not a good situation if you're Derek Mason, but uh, I guess if you're talking about another hot seat candidate, um, I don't. That's a good question. I mean, you'd have to tell me. Well, Jim Harbaugh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, he's definite hot seat. But that wasn't even who I was thinking about. But Harbaugh, they're talking about. You know, just rolling up. You, you talk about backing up the truck. We're talking about backing up the truck and uh, and offering possibly the number one candidate for that job is Luke Fickle at Cincinnati, former Ohio <laughs> assistant to get right. the job, which would be interesting. I mean, he's killing it. And if you watch Cincinnati play this year, they're good. I mean, now granted, they're not playing, you know, sec level competition but they're disposing of them pretty easily um and just put up points like it's a video game or something and uh so 
I think I think Jim Harbaugh, like you said, that's a good that's a good pick. The one guy I was thinking about uh, is down in the Lone Star State, Tom Herman. Oh, and they're already already talking about hey let's see if we can coax urban meyer out of semi-retirement and get him to texas let's just give him half the state north of san antonio and uh to come uh you know coach the longhorns uh and i mean here's the thing like you you are literally in the hotbed of recruiting texas oklahoma louisiana arkansas and you're texas right i mean you should you should be getting the lion's share of these of these great recruits out of Texas, and they're they're not. They're they're leaving. They're going to Oklahoma. They're going to LSU. Um, you know, they're going out west. They're going to the SEC, um, and you know, he just hasn't had that sustained success. Hasn't had really. I mean, he beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, and you know, I think Georgia was not even interested in playing in that game. Um, but you know that's maybe that's maybe his biggest win thus far, and that's just not enough for that for the Texas fan base and the Longhorn Network. I think they've they've soured on him. You know he was a big get out of Houston. He was the hot commodity back then. But uh, look for them look for them to take a shot at Urban Meyer. I would not be surprised if they did that. But must champs out and uh, your boy your boy's name got dropped. At South Carolina. Yeah. yeah. You, you freeze, man. This guy's a hot commodity. I let me let me go back to this Texas thing. I mean, you know, Tom Herman is like five and two, right? He's yeah. probably gonna win this week, six and two. Uh man, what I would trade as a Tennessee fan, uh the real UT, to have a six and two record, right? After eight weeks. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. You know what? Sometimes don't always uh, go looking into the, uh, in the, into the neighbor's yard uh, because – The grass ain't always greener over there. No. It just, nope. it just appears that way because of your perspective. That's right. And, uh, you, know, the, you know, they're looking for the reincarnation of, uh, of Mac Brown or Bud Wilkinson. No, he was Oklahoma. Yeah. But, uh, um, <laughs> that's, that's just not going to happen. I mean, you know – the, the guys that were on that Texas team that won the national title in 06, I mean, they're a rare breed. They only come around ever so often. Um, do you get a big <laughs> at the college level? He was dominant. Now he struggled in the pros, but as you well know, being a Titans fan, but um, yeah, I mean, being where he is, man, just kind of, just kind of underperformed a little bit. And, uh, and I think the, I think it may end up being his downfall, but like you said, five and two, you know, but you know, Bill Curry was ten and two, getting brick stone to do his window at Alabama. So it's yeah. it's all about expectation. You know, if uh, uh, you know, I mean, Mark Stoops at Kentucky. I mean, if he was six and two, I mean, when he when they went ten and three two years ago, I mean, it was like what Kentucky won ten games. It was crazy. So um, the expectation level of these programs is much much different. All right, all right. Let's get to draft tomorrow or excuse me wednesday night is nba nba draft and i don't know about you paul if you're available we may do a maybe some sort of live draft facebook live possibly uh, that might be interesting at least through the mid rounds uh to do that uh, but who you got who you got is your number one guy coming out uh <coughs> excuse me um it's got to be your guy, right? Uh, from uh, Georgia. Yeah, I think it's got to be. It's got to be Anthony Edwards. I mean, that's just um, that's that's almost a no brainer um, for me. I mean, it, it, when you're when you're talking about guys that have uh, pretty much everything, they got the full, they got the total game. Um, you know, I got a chance to you know watch him a couple times play. Um, you know, play against Kentucky and, you know, he was, uh, he was as advertised. I mean, um, you know, he, Kentucky, <laughs> Kentucky wanted him bad um, and he decided to stay home. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, 
it was good for Georgia. They didn't win as many games, obviously, as they wanted to. Of course, with the with the tournament getting cut short, who knows what they could have done in the SEC tournament. Um, but yeah, I think you got to go uh, Anthony Edwards. I mean, I think I see probably Wiseman to go top three. They're talking about Lamelo Ball being cracking that top three as well. Yeah. But I don't know. What do you think? I, I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, if Lamelo goes number one, I'd be shocked. Uh, but the Timberwolves have made crazy picks before, right? Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Uh, well, it's if, kind if of James a. Uh, if James Wiseman goes to the Golden State Warriors, uh, that would be a huge pickup. Um, and then if you know if it all translates and, and and maybe Anthony Edwards goes to the Hornets, wow, that would be big. That would be big. So uh, then it'll be interesting to see like Obi Toppin and uh, maybe he will go to the Cavs. But uh, you know, other than that, you just kind of it's like you say their name and people are like, "Who?" Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because we missed out on some of these guys, you know, we pick up on these names right at the NCAA tournament. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, you get guys that shine uh, in in the tournament, and uh, right. you know, and and kind of make a name for themselves, and you know, increase their draft stock. I mean, you know, and and again, here's a key thing: the Warriors are picking two; they're going to have all their guys back. Um, so it's going to be, I think, really important. Um, I mean, I think they might go after a guy like Wiseman, you know, to kind of round that out because you got Draymond, who's a free agent. Uh, you know, then maybe they let him go. I don't know, but um, you know, I think, I think, I still think Toppin's going to go top five. I mean, he might, might be down there with, uh, uh, he might be there with Colin Sexton at Cleveland. That'd be a good pairing. Um, you know, um, and of course the Hawks, of course the Hawks have like the sixth pick, which is like, you know, you're not going to get the awesome dude, but you might get a guy that's a decent piece to add. Um, you know, there's a guy, I think that a lot of the folks down here talking about um, a lot of the mock drafts are we've got the guy from USC, uh, a Kong Wu going there, the forward center. Um to kind of play off of, they got John Collins and Clint Capella. Um, but then again, do you package that pick and maybe try to go get somebody like a Drew Holiday or a Victor Oladipo that can kind of go with Trey Young? It's, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's all about what what they want. I don't know. And the thing is, here's what I don't I don't think if the if I about said if the Falcons, if the Hawks are smart, which they really haven't been in their, you know, the Trey Young pickup was good, but um, if they're smart, I think they package this pick for a veteran because they don't really need another young guy because they got enough young guys that play really significant minutes. I think they need, um, they need somebody that can bring some leadership in that locker room and some experience in that locker room because that's something they desperately need and they just really don't have it right now. Uh, so, I mean, kid from Atlanta, Okoro from Auburn, he's probably going to go top 10. Um, but as, as far as, you know, we're used to seeing a lot of, you know, like Kentucky guys go up top and it's just, it's just not happening this year. Um, you know, you got the two SEC guys in Edwards and Okoro, but those are, you know, they're not Kentucky guys. So it's, it's, I think probably the first, the first Kentucky guy off the board is probably going to be Maxie. Um, if I had to guess, just because just because of his skill, his skill level, your boy Neesmith is probably going to go maybe top 15, probably top top 20 more like. Um, but you know, again, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, and it's all based on need, right? I mean, you know, what are these do they need size? Do they need shooting and the way the you know, the, the way the league is, I mean, you got to have shooters um, and you need a rim protector, I feel like. So maybe the maybe the, the Hawks package that pick for one of those. I mean, they got Trey Young, 
who's a, who's a shooter. They got Herder, who's a shooter. So maybe they package it for a guy like uh, Andre Drummond or somebody like that uh, in a trade. I don't know. But um, some trades have already happened. Chris Paul. That's right. The, going to the Suns for a future draft pick um, and one – and like three other players, I think they named one of the players. Um, I can't think of who. Well, oh, uh, Ricky Rubio and two other players that have yeah. not been named. Yeah, the twenty twenty two first round pick. So, how about, how about your boy Dennis Schroeder? Oh yeah, dude. He, Atlanta, Atlanta Hawk, great. He just won the lottery. German chocolate. He just won. He just won the lottery, dude. Going to the Lakers. Yeah. So with that, I think. Rajon Rondo may be on the market uh, looking for a new team. Is Rajon Rondo the guy you want to bring in to back up Trey Young? You know, I don't know. Because if you get playoff, if you get playoff Rondo all the time, I say, yeah. But if you get like <coughs> attitude Rondo, I don't know. <laughs> Man, I don't know that I don't know if you want those young dudes around that Rondo. You know what I'm saying? Um well, let, let me let me throw this one bit of information for you, Coach. Uh, All right. Listen, if you're interested in any kind of building of a franchise, right, you've got to take a look at the blueprint the Oklahoma City Thunder have done. I mean, have you looked at this at all? No. So they have stockpiled through various – a sundry of moves, okay? So – in this year's draft, they have the Nuggets first round, the Lakers first round, and then they have their own second round. So, yeah, I got they got three picks from 25, 28, and 53. All right. 2021, they have their own first round. They have the Heat's first round. Uh, they have the Rockets first round. If it's outside of the top four. And then they have the second uh Second round, their own second round, right? 2022, they get their first round. They have the Clippers first round. They have the Suns first round. Um, just depending on where that falls into. And then they have uh, a second round. So, and then 2023, they have the Heat and the Thunder and the Clippers first round and their second round. So, tell me who the OKC basketball coach is now. Yeah, they get rid of the best coach in one of the best coaches in the league. I don't know who their coach is. Oh, you don't? No, I don't. Mark Dagnault. D A I G N E A U L T. What? Dagnault. Dagnault. Was he from France? Former assistant, former G League coach. Congratulations. They I mean, you know, that what this is, he's there for a year. He He's there for a year. They're going to draft. He's there for a year. And they got to bring up a big, they got to bring in a big gun. Uh, maybe offer them the head coach GM position to yeah. lure, like you said, with those draft picks they got coming to lure a big name. Yeah. Uh, so. All right. Enough about the NBA. Yeah, man. enough about. Let's go in NCAA. What this is where we live, because the 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 Vols are going to have a good squad this year. Kentucky is again picked to win the league. The Vols are picked to challenge them. Um, and we're already getting we're already getting a word that they're looking at a bubble in Indianapolis for the tournament for everybody. Um. And then we got our boy Rick Patino saying, let's not play yet. I'm at Iona. I'm not ready. <laughs> I don't want to play it. We should push it. I'm not, I'm not ready. We should have May madness. That just sounds all kinds of wrong, Paul. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what he's doing, uh, <laughs> but uh, here's what I do know. The, as far as it being in Indianapolis, you know, I think that's just an easy um, fix for the NCAA as their headquarters is in Indianapolis, right? 
Yeah. They would have control over it. Um, they probably know the ins and outs of the city really well. I, I'm just inter interesting to see how the facilities are going to play out, right? I mean, uh, if you bring 60, uh, 68 teams in there, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you got to look around the area and see, like, okay, you got IUPUI, which is right there. Um, you know, you got Purdue, which is close by, which you could maybe do that. Um, you know, I don't know how close Bloomington <laughs> is, but there's maybe some satellite sites that you could do, and then maybe you do the Sweet 16, everybody in the, you know, Lucas Oil. Um, I don't know. It, it's It's – it's an interesting uh, setup and plan, um, but you know at least they're planning for it. You know because what we can't have, we can't have a, another year where we don't have a tournament. Um, I mean that's that's that was just I think that was the when that happened. I'm, I'm, and we're going to get to this in the next topic when the NBA and the pro sports started shutting down. That's that started the ball. That started the snowball rolling downhill. Um, because I remember it was March 11th and the NBA trotted some guys out and they said, you know what? We got a guy that's got this virus. We're shutting down. We're not playing. And then boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden within two days, uh, we were closing schools for two weeks and we never reopened it until we didn't until November 4th or 5th, you know? So I think the society takes their cues from sports and I think we're going we're gonna to see that now. And that's what I want to talk about. That's why I put this next topic on there, high school sports and the pandemic. Um, and Leslie brought up a great point because we're getting, we, every day, like whenever they have a positive case at my daughter's school and at my school and your school too, they have to send a letter home, right? Yeah. Okay. So we get, a, we get an email every single day since shoot since they start sending them out every day two four eight five three one i mean every day we get one and so leslie made a good point she said she goes are they just are they just staying in school until football's over and i was basically like yeah they are i said you know everything's going to change once they play that state championship game which is going to be like december the 24th or something like no or december the 27th that's when the state championship is going to be in georgia december the 27th um it's going to be on a monday um and or wait 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 18th yeah because yeah because christmas is on a friday so it's going to be the 28th excuse me it's going to be december the 28th so when she when she said that i was like yeah, that's probably what they're going to do. Um, and I don't know what that means for basketball. I talked to uh, a friend of mine, a Lipscomb guy, Brent Oliver. You remember Brent? Yep. He told, he's lives in Alabama as athletic trainer there. And he said, he said uh, his school just, po just uh, suspended all extracurriculars until January. Oh, wow. So Alabama. Yeah, so I feel like that, I, and I don't know if it's just his county or what, but or his district, but they have done that, and that's I think that's coming. So when we look at high school sports, you know, whatever you do, maybe, it, you know, these Thanksgiving tournaments for basketball, which I know you guys have them, we have them. Um, I hope that's not the only, only basketball we get the rest of 2020. They don't say we're going to suspend until 2021 and re and for you wrestling, because you're right in the middle of wrestling and basketball. Right. So have you lost any games, basketball games, reschedules? Uh, well, we don't really start until uh, th after Thanksgiving break. Uh, high school like, started to uh, – they could play their – they call it their Hall of Fame games where it's like – right. If you win, you count it. If you lose, you don't have to count it against your record. Oh. Uh, and they – so they started those night. But anyway, uh, you know, I think you probably hit that – you 
uh, nail on the head with the football deal. Uh, uh, your alma mater, Brentwood High, which uh, won at the buzzer uh, the other night in the uh, let's see, is it quarterfinals, second round. I, it made the uh, ESPN top 10, by the way. Oh, really? Uh, quarterback Kay Grenzow uh, scrambled about the 10 yard line, about to be taken down on fourth and goal. Underhand shovel to a wide open kid in the back of the end zone. And the Bruins wow. advance. The Bruins advance. Who they beat? Uh, they beat uh, Independence High School. Oh, oh, your boys at Indy, you always do their games. Yeah, yeah. So, did, did their quarterback have a monster game? No, no. Really? So, it was just a blue, blue collar type game. A lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of just uh, three and outs kind of deal. But uh, anyway, back to the point. Brentwood High had been in remote, uh, but yet, you know, their football game still played. So Right. So they've been uh, total virtual. They Yeah, they, they had not been on campus. So Since it, when? Uh, it actually had been two weeks, I think. Okay. So they started back, but then went back virtual. Uh, all right, say that one more time. So they started, they went back face to face at some point and then went back to virtual. Yeah, they were in the same situation as us, right? Okay. Uh, as, as all Williamson County schools, but uh, I, because of the high number, right, of uh, quarantine kids, yeah, uh, they had gone back to remote. Wow. Uh, they just went back face to face today. So anyway, that makes no sense to me. Why are you going to go back face to face four days before Thanksgiving break? <laughs> I mean, that makes no sense. I was just talking, I was, Leslie just told me, she said, Hey, my, uh, my brother-in-law teaches middle school over in Cherokee County, which is, uh, Northeast of us. And, uh, said a fourth of his school, a fourth of his middle school, not his grade, one fourth of grade six to eight in his school is, uh, under quarantine due to contact tracing, a fourth. Wow. How are you supposed to do anything that way? Sports included, like, you know, but like, I just don't know how you're supposed to get anything accomplished. And we're finding now, or I'm finding now, it's hard to get anything accomplished uh, the way that we've got it uh, set up. But um, anyway, high school sports in the pandemic, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for the coaches. It's new. It's it's you've got to do so much extra, as you well know. Um, so uh, I just hope Terry gets to do gets to have his season. This is his first season as head coach, and I hate that it's being spoiled uh, uh, or changed or altered the way this is. All right, let's get to our final our final topic of the evening. And I don't know if you guys can tell or not. Paul, Paul doesn't have a lot of energy tonight. Huh. And, there's he just kind of he's he's a little bit more chill than normal um and uh so paul i don't want to i don't want to have any like hipaa violations on me so <laughs> maybe let our let our audience know what's up yeah i don't know i don't know what's up uh hey had to, had to be quarantined correct let's just say uh you know it it it's uh covid if you were ever a doubter, it's a, it's a real thing, right? Yep. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. And, uh, you know, just know that uh, your kids probably exposed you <laughs> <laughs> and are, yeah. are probably the reason why the, uh, the, the uh, germs may enter your household, right? Yeah. Um, anyway. It's uh, it's been an interesting uh, week for sure. So, uh, you're, you're off quarantine when? After Thanksgiving, you won't go back till the thirtieth. Uh, officially the twenty first, which is a Saturday. Okay. So, uh, just, just in time to celebrate my birthday. Anybody listening out there want to send me any? There you go. Well wishes. Uh, they are much appreciated. 
celebrating number 49 on Sunday. Just kind of, I think I'm going to just, just hold at 49, Breeze. Man, it's in your best interest to do that. Yeah, I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, I'm going to cling on to 49, like, like grim death. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so I got at least another year to uh, break 90 before I hit 50. Uh, and I'll tell you yeah. what, if the weather's nice Thanksgiving break, I'm going to, I'm going to go out there, see what I can get done. That's, well, do here's, here's, uh, you know, at 50, I got, it's funny. I got a letter today in the mail. It was from my, um, uh, um a doctor that is uh my recommended that i get a colonoscopy because i'm 50 now <laughs> great uh, little did he not realize i already got one in july so team right. colonoscopy check <laughs> congratulations to me um that's my uh psa announcement for you guys at age 50 yeah Oh gosh, and that is and Brees, that is our demographic, as we well know. Unfortunately, it is now. I mean, yeah, 40, 40, 45 to fifty four year uh, year old males is our is our sole demographic now uh, here at Drive Through Sports. Uh, but you know, it's it, it, it's funny because you know when we were obviously it happens all the time, right? You you uh, you're younger, you make fun of old people. Even if they're 40, you you know, you, you made fun of them. And uh, now you're you're at that point. You're like, oh, man, you know, I, I probably shouldn't have said some stuff. Uh, you know, you know, even we were playing softball and we had some uh, older guys playing our team. You're like, come on, man, this guy can run faster than this. Right. And we were like mid 20s and they were like starting to get in their 40s. And you're like, geez, oh, Pete, what is wrong with these guys? <laughs> <laughs> now if you exactly. asked us to go out there and, and hit it around it would be a very comical situation for sure yeah so. i was uh ella was doing some dry land and i was showing her some stuff to do for dry land and i did some uh i did some squat jumps i did like 10 squat jumps and i was sweating like you wouldn't believe yeah i was like why did i just do that i mean i'm gonna i know i'm gonna be sore tomorrow just doing that so I feel you, man. I yeah. feel you. It's, it's, it so, catches up to the best of us. So life lesson, kids, don't make fun of the elderly, even if they're 42 <laughs> or, or 52. You're going to be there one day. Uh, right. Just know that for a fact. As I have to wear these glasses just to see what's going on now. <laughs> All right, man. Well, that's going to wrap up our show for tonight. Our 100th episode, Paul. Big milestone here on it. on. Uh, on November, what is it? November the 16th, man. Our, we've been grinding, grinding since March 26th, our first episode. And we hope to bring you another hundred and some more great interviews. But till then, till till the next day, hopefully maybe uh Wednesday night draft episode. What do you say? Okay. I'll have to do a little research, but we can make it happen. Right, let's do it. We'll do a little Facebook live draft episode uh, for everybody. If you want to get in on that, um, tune in. Uh, hopefully I'll share it correctly. So all, all of Paul's buddies can get in on it as well. But uh, for Paul Brees in Brentwood, Tennessee, Adam Freeman here in Atlanta, Georgia, you're listening to drive through sports with Adam and Paul.